on Tuesday, 1 September 2020 at 630. Uh, roll call, please. Trustees Nelson? Here. Pike? Here. President Wecken? Here. Trustees Ice? Here. Thank you. Item two, minutes from the regular finance and personnel committee meeting uh, from 4 August 2020. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any amendments or corrections or additions? Hearing none, all in favor of the minutes as presented, take them by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Item three is claim review and recommendations. Uh, Stan, can I move to recommend the board to approve the September 2020 non-recurring claims of $57,471.75? Thank you, Kirk. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Tim. Uh, any discussion, questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor of, or no, that's a roll call, so Tim? Yes. Kirk? Yes. Brian? Yes. And I'll say yes. Okay, item four, catch basin repairs, discussion, possible recommendations. Is there a motion? Stan, I'd like to recommend having Everlast Rehab Seal Storm Sewer Catch Basins with price not to exceed $8,000, funding to be taken from repair and maintenance of storm sewer account. Thank you, Brian. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Kirk. Any discussion? Explanations or anything? It's just that's the same group we had before, isn't it, Brian? Right. You know, yeah. we've, we've been working on this for four years to get these caught up a little bit, but we're hoping to come with a little faster schedule, a five-year schedule at uh, the next budget discussion. Oh, sounds good. Okay, let's see. And that's a spending issue. So, Brian? Yes. Kirk? Yes. Tim? Yes. And yes. Item five, replacement of control panel for East Bank lift station discussion, discussion and possible action. Stan, I'd like to recommend to have B&M Technologies install new control panel for East Bank Sanitary Sewer Lift Station with costs not to exceed 19500 Funding will come from the 201 account. And I believe we budgeted for this, right, Melissa? Yes, sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, and uh, any further discussion? I will uh, second it. Okay. I don't think it was second yet. Um, what's the 201 account again? That's the the sewer fund, I believe. If it's, that's one, correct, it's, one Patrick, of, or Melissa? It, it's one of them. Okay. So, uh, uh, any, repair and maintenance. Sorry. No, no, that's, that's all sewer good. Sewer repair and maintenance fund. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or discussion? Hearing none, Tim? Yes. Kirk? Yes. Brian? Yes. Yes. Thank you. And item six is that we are adjourned at 634. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone, and welcome, everyone, to the uh, Village of North Hudson regular board meeting and Village of Trustees uh, on Tuesday, 1 September 2020 at 7 p.m. Uh, I have a short invocation. Lord, our nation needs your guidance and direction. We humbly ask your spirit to intercede with the leaders of the nation, giving them the wisdom to make decisions that will honor you. We pray fervently for peace, both here and abroad. Let us live with reverence uh, for you and the peace in our hearts for our fellow man. We know this is your desire. And I hope everybody... Uh, we'll spend time to think about the people that are uh, in the middle of the trouble and everything out there now and keep them in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, Tracy, uh, no, not, not Tracy, Jessica, how about a roll call? Trustees Head, Leaf, Mats. Here. 
Nelson? Here. Pike? Here. President Wecken? Here. Trustee Zeiss? Here. Thank you. Item two, review and approve minutes from the regular board meeting of 4 August 2020. Is there a motion? So moved. Thank you, Brian. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Phil. Uh, any discussions, corrections, or additions to the minutes as presented? Hearing none, all in favor of the minutes as presented, signal are saying aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, item three, comments from the floor. Uh, opportunity for residents to make the board aware of topics, issues, opportunities either on or not on today's agenda. It doesn't sound like we have anybody or anybody's pushed anything through. So item four is uh, we're going to have the joint library board update discussion only. And I don't know, Tracy or Shelly, you're... Who's going to start out? You got about 10 minutes. Um, I'll go ahead and get started. Um, I haven't you. met all of you. Shelly Tugas, I'm the interim director at the library, started in the middle of June. And I just wanted to give a quick thanks to um, President Wecken for um, spending a few hours with me and getting me up to speed. It has been very helpful. And also for sending us Tracy Whiteley, who has a fantastic business and finance perspective that we can really use at the library. So I'm very grateful for that also. Um, we're gonna kind of tag team this. She'll talk a little bit about our funding request, but I did want to um, tell you a little bit about what the library has been doing during the pandemic. Um, I'm going to try to share my screen. Um, is that something we think will be workable? Otherwise, I'll just talk through it. Uh, if we, you could, we, I don't know how that works. So. <laughs> Shelly, they, they, they turned they on your, your screen, so you should be able to. Okay, let's give this a go. And holler at me if you're not seeing a PowerPoint. <laughs> okay. Let me just find it here. And are you um, seeing the PowerPoint? Not a. No? Did you do the share screen at the bottom? I did. Oh, yep, no, nope. <laughs> don't see it. Let me just check one more time. Maybe I didn't hit it properly. Oh, there we go. There we got it. Okay. Then let Winter. me just <laughs> into present mode. Whoa. There we go. All right. So um, just quickly, I've got, it's really hard for me to settle on photos that I'm going to share, but this is um, a couple of photos from what a normal summer would look for us. We, um, as you know, um, all of our programs are free to people who attend and they are not funded with taxpayer dollars. We get donations from the Friends of the Library and the Hudson Area Library Foundation and that's how we pay for these programs. So normally we have, um, we've had six camps last summer. You can see history, science, Harry Potter, um, writing camp, space camp, STEM camps. Um, we also do an experience and performance series where we have magicians, musicians, um, a reptile lady, and we brought a petting zoo to National Night Out, and there were about 3,000 people who went through that petting zoo, so that was a really wonderful time. And of course, we do a normal summer reading program. Last year was our record number of participants in early, um, the early learners through school age learners, so up to fifth grade, we had 650 participants alone, so that was fantastic. And we all know what hit uh, this winter, and it's put every one of our institutions into um, a quick mode of adapting and evolving. We closed in, um, was it the end of March? And immediately the next day sat down figuring out how can we reinvent our service model so community members are getting access to the services they need, that they value, and that they pay for. So first, I just, most people don't know our planning team. They're all part-time except for me, um, Sarah, Joseph, Chris, and Joan. 
And we first came up with a virtual library center that had all kinds of resources for people in the community from academic support to fun craft things to museums you could tour. Um, we also made sure our phones were answered from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. by anybody who called the library and developed a chat with a librarian feature. We were also able to get Ancestry.com to our library card holders for free for a couple of months. Um, and if you've used that, you know it is uh, very addictive and you can spend many, many hours on that program. So we created a YouTube channel and moved all of our programs over to YouTube. We did science, craft, community interviews, author meet and greets. I did a cooking demo for kids on Mother's Day on how to make homemade pancakes for their moms. So we were able to do some really fun things with YouTube. Um, I would like to point out that we are the only library who did full programming on a YouTube channel. And I'm not sure why that is, why a lot of people didn't take advantage of that, but I was really proud of our team for embracing all this new technology and just running with it. Um, we are also doing other programs by Zoom, live streams, and some in building with social distancing, not very much. But the one I want to point out is you'll see the Easter Bunny. We have a staff member with an Easter Bunny costume. So on Facebook, we let people nominate their neighborhood. Then we did a random drawing and the Easter Bunny did a walk through the neighborhood so kids could see the Easter Bunny, wave. He uh, left eggs in their yards. And that was a really a remarkable time. And it was a time when people really needed to be able to stand outside and see something happening. Um, we continued our camps. We did virtual camps um, instead of in-person, writing camps, art camps, STEM and space camps, and then just two purely fun game camps. And I wish I could tell you it was as much fun as our in-person camps, but honestly, it was not. Um, it's very challenging to engage with kids in that way. What we did is we compiled kits for them to use. Their families picked up the kits at the library, and then we were able to work on these projects as a group using Zoom. We also have a teen librarian who set up a Discord site which I hadn't heard of, but he's doing teen book chats, teen music chats, teen culture chats. He's meeting with teen advisory board and doing all kinds of really cool teen programs. And honestly, some of those programs in the summer, those book chats got more teens online than we would get in the building. So I think that's an element of this that we will probably um, keep after the pandemic. We had to go to an online reading program. The numbers went down significantly, which was across the state. We weren't surprised. We had 350 participants total. And as I told you, our record number was 650 just for preschool through elementary. The 350 here included everyone, adults, teens, and young kids. So it was certainly disappointing. Um, we're really grateful though to the state of Wisconsin because they paid for every library in the state to be able to use this online reading program. And that was a really incredible thing for them to do because it's an expensive service and um, the libraries you know, had included in our budgets. And then um, as soon as we were allowed to do curbside service, we started that. So people could call us, email us, or go online and order the books they wanted. Then we scheduled an appointment for them to come and do a contactless pickup of their books. We expanded the Wi-Fi service so you could be as far out as the boat parking lot and access the library's public Wi-Fi. And we've just started doing um, book deliveries to senior living centers. So we fill up a bin with books and bring that to them, recommend that they quarantine it for 96 hours. They can have it for several weeks, then we collect it and bring them a new batch. And that's going really well. We're really excited we're able to do that because our seniors are not coming back to the library yet. My most favorite thing that we've done during this time, we're doing an oral history project. So we're interviewing people from all over the community, from officials um, like the police chief to teenagers about what this experience is like in real time. And it's going to be put together on a DVD in our history room for research. We'll also make a DVD people can check out 
and other organizations can have. And we'll take out highlights of the most interesting things and be putting them on our YouTube channel. So that's um, going to be a really exciting thing for this community to have for many, many years into the future. And now we are open. Um, we have limited services and limited hours, as you probably have heard. We're open 10 to two. Uh, we have a capacity limit of 15 people at the, in one time at the building and staff is not included in that. Um, I'll tell you, we're getting about 150 people a day, which is pretty good considering the uh, capacity limits that we have. And nearly every day we will have a line outside the library at some point of people who are waiting to get in. So we're very eager to expand that capacity and expand the hours. We would like to see how school opening goes for the community before we make any decisions. So hopefully in a few weeks, we'll know um, better about how we can proceed. So um, for the 2021 funding, um, I just have um, a couple of background items for you. Um, this has the funding from 2015 to 2019, and it just shows your actual funding that um, you provided to the library, what you would have paid um, to the county if you were not part of the joint library, and what those savings have been over the years then. And I'm gonna let Tracy talk about the budget that the board has tentatively approved. Um, changes will be made based on new information we get from the village and our other funding partners. And then also we can touch base and talk about um, an upcoming stakeholder retreat that we're going to have in February. And um, I know we're both happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you, Shelley. Um, First of all, I'd just like to say that I'm so proud of um, what Shelley um, has done with the library um, during this challenging time. And um, I'm grateful that she was able to go through some of the um, more recent programs that they've implemented. Such a strong, um, uh, important part of our community. Um, so two things, uh, this um, next budget season, we are asking for um, an increase from the village of North Hudson of $2,000. And um, that is uh, to help us with the um, regular increase in operating costs. Um, I believe you got a copy of the um, Hudson Area Public Library budget proposal. Um, it's uh, just a 1.3% increase over last year, and um, we are committed to um, drawing down some of the reserves that we have um, in, in our um, savings account. And um, I think Shelley pointed out on the budget that uh, last year we, we also committed to drawing down uh, 74000 from the... Um, from the budget, but um, due to a departure of Tina and um, some of the changes related to COVID, we um, did not uh, need to even draw down that budget, so, or draw down that reserve. Um, so that, that sometimes happens. Um, the second thing I wanted to mention was that uh, we, we would like your participation um, in the winter uh, for a stakeholder retreat for the library um, because we do have um, a funding shortage long term um, after we're, you know, if we're able to draw down our reserves to a, um, a more appropriate level, then um, we um, need to uh, make sure that we have adequate revenues to um, match our operating expenses. Um, so I'll uh, leave it there, um, and uh, I think we're at our time, but um, if anybody has any questions, uh, we're happy to take them. Shelly, do you want to stop sharing your screen? Yes, I will. There we go. Thank you. So Stan, any questions? Oh, I think you're on mute, Stan. Unmute. There we go. There you uh, go. Paul, just a question. With this discussion only, we can't really do back and forth, correct? 
No, you shouldn't have a discussion about the topics. It's more of a listening session. But if you have a, a specific question on what they said, uh, you want something clarified, that's appropriate. Okay, anybody out there have a question? Apparently not. Well, I would uh, like to thank Stan, you. Stan, I just want to make sure to say uh, thank you for you two for all the updates. It's really awesome to have that. And we really appreciate to see what uh, the library is doing. So it does mean a lot to us to update us on that. I appreciate that. Thank you. I agree. Good work. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Well, thank you for uh, giving us the update. And uh, as I told you, Shelly and Tracy, that uh, uh, with the, the way this has been going this year, we do not know what our revenues are going to be. So uh, we will do the best we can to, uh, to keep uh, our costs down and not have to go into the county. So, uh, uh, and again, thank you very much. And I hope you have a blessed evening. Thanks so much. Thank you. It. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, item five, application for conveyance of land filed by James Thomas, approval requested. And I saw James here just a minute ago. There you are. Hello, everybody. Hi, Joe. Okay, uh, is there a motion to approve? Stan, I move to approve the application for conveyance of land between the adjoining properties of James Thomas at 1136 and 1140 Riverside Drive North. Thank you, Brian. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, discussion. Jim, you maybe give us a little history of what you're doing? Sure, I'd love to, Stan. Um, basically, I've owned my property at 1140 Riverside Drive now for just over 20 years. Uh, about 14 years ago, I bought uh, three quarters of, a, of an acre adjoining me uh, and uh, created a deeded access to the lake uh, over the last, well, many years. I've been in uh, communication with the DNR, the uh, city of Hudson, the well melissa obviously <laughs> um and uh, made sure that i've jumped through all the proper hoops uh crossed my t's and dotted my i's it was a requirement that i had a minimum of 50 feet of shoreline um so that uh when the lot is sold or built on that it is a legal um lot to be able to put a a pier, which we all better know as a dock in. And uh, so I did everything basically uh, in all of my conversations with Melissa. The only concern that would have arisen is if either of these lots was considered substandard or non-standard being um, less than whatever the minimum square footage is that the village requires. Neither of them are uh, anything other than standard and uh, should be I believe um, well, it's been approved by Brian Wirt and um, pretty much everybody. So I think uh, unless Melissa has stumbled in anything I missed, I think it's pretty much a slam dunk at this point. Very good. Kevin, I think you were involved in that too. Yes. Yes. Yep. Went through okay. the, uh, the review of it and recommended oh, approval. All right, that sounds good. So, uh, let's see, I think we need a, a motion and an approval, or a vote. Which one is it now? Vote. Okay, thank you. Uh, Kirk. Yes. Thank you. Tim? Tim Zeiss? Yes. Phil Matz? Yes. Uh, let's see, Kathy Leaves has joined us. From yes. the Golden Gate. Yeah, I, I'm using my phone and I realize I have a virtual background and it looks ridiculous. My other, my laptop <laughs> not working. So, yes. I, Thank you. I, I, I vote. Brian Pike. Yes. Sounds good. I haven't, I don't see Lori anyplace. Nope. Okay. Uh, and I would vote yes also. So, Jim, good luck and Thanks for uh, popping in on us tonight. 
Hey, thank you. Always good to be a part of this. I uh, I would love to say I miss it all dearly, but that might be a stretch. But I certainly do appreciate what you all do. And I forgot to mention, Kevin, thank you so much for all of your assistance in this. Uh, I couldn't have done it without you. Thank you. Have all a right. great night, Jim. I'm going to sign off. Thank you, guys. Right. Thank, thank you. you Bye-bye. Okay, item six, appeal of operator's license denial, Maggie. Wettelson, discuss possible actions. So, motions or? Uh, I don't know exactly how I to do that motion. <laughs> no, that's that's the other thing. I mean, well, part of the history, uh, when any time that uh, the chief has, you know, by our ordinance, refuses an operator's license for, for a violation, uh, it, it's, uh, we have it in there also that the, uh, the person that was denied, uh, the license, uh, can appeal and we have had an appeal from Maggie. I see that she's on here, I believe. And, uh, uh, Paul, what, uh, what's the direction we should go with this? I don't know, motions or whatever. So, or the chief, well, you're a parliamentarian too. I would. I would hear from the applicant, uh, you know, you have a written statement as part of the package, but I think you should give her a chance to speak. Uh, and then, it, you know, whichever motion you choose, you can just make it to approve or deny the license and then state your reasons why you feel it's appropriate for the appeal to be granted or denied. Okay, thank you. Uh, Maggie, can you hear me? Yeah, I, I think so. I am on my phone as well. I have no idea how Zoom works, but <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> okay, well, uh, you you sent a very nice letter, and uh, and I just thought maybe you could uh, uh, just uh, expound on that a little bit. You know, to let us know that uh, I've, uh, you're you're towing the line, and you're, you you were young and dumb, and now you're paying attention. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, basically, you guys all know me, probably from STARS or otherwise, and I did get uh, a DUI a little over a year ago, and that is why uh, I lost my operator's license, and pretty much following that up, uh, working here, I didn't drink for about a year, I took some time off, and just worked to save up and pay all my tickets off, and took my classes, got everything done, um, and yeah, so basically I, I fully know that I deserved to get it and I believe I made the changes I needed to and learned my lesson and I just really would love to continue working at Stars Bar. I love my job. I've been here for four years. Today actually is the four year anniversary of Dave buying the bar. So yeah, I, I know I made a mistake that is unfortunately common I, I think but i think i learned my lesson from it and i just would hate to lose my job from this as well that would yeah i just think i don't know it, if you guys gave me the chance to have my license back I, you guys wouldn't regret it and i would appreciate it <laughs> greatly uh stan i would like to That's, um add to this that I yeah Sorry, Maggie. Uh, I'd like to add to this that I've, uh, I know Maggie and I have uh, seen her down there a lot and she definitely means business, learned from this and it was, uh, it was a one-time thing. Thank you, Kurt. Uh, anybody else? Um, I would make a motion to approve her operator's license. Thank you, Kathy. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, and Chief, thank you for doing your job. And uh, I know it looks like we roll you every time on the, on this, but uh, uh, so far we've been pretty lucky that, or blessed that uh, the the ones that we have allowed to go back to work haven't had any further violations, as best I know. So uh, I want to thank you for that. You've done you, your your department has been doing a great job, and we absolutely back the blue. And I hope everybody on this board also would affirm that we back the blue and we appreciate what you all do.
Thanks, Dan. Okay, I reference so- that. I, I don't take this personally. It's just one of those things that it's a procedural matter, mm-hmm. and uh, and I don't. I hope that the applicants don't take it personally and understand that there's a, a process. And I, I appreciate the fact that those there have been those that we've denied and that they don't appeal. Um, and so I think that's a good thing that we know that the ones that are appealing do have, uh, I guess, a, a vested interest in it. And uh, I appreciate the the feedback from both the applicant as well as the board. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so let's uh, have a vote all in favor of uh, allowing Maggie to continue being a, a servant at the bar. Uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Don't let us down, Maggie. I won't. Thank you, guys. Thank I appreciate you. it. Do I just hang up on this now? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, <laughs> just, just hit leave. There should be a leave button someplace, I think. I don't know about on the phone. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. You take care. You too. Okay. Item seven, new business from the board of staff, president's comments. Uh, following up on the, the you know, my little... Uh, uh, attaboy of the chief. I just like to remind everybody that on this coming Saturday at big guys barbecue from noon until three, there is a back to blue. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't think we, we wouldn't call it protest or, but it's in support of all of our law enforcement County, everybody. They've got some events planned out there. So I would hope that uh, if you have time on Saturday that you would uh, stop out and thank our law officers that are, oh, everybody knows what's going on. If you've watched any news at all, you, we they need our support now more than ever. So please, uh, if you can stop out, I, it would be greatly appreciated. And next thing I have is uh, it's uh, already Labor Day coming up on Monday. And I just hope everyone has a safe and happy Labor Day. And then also I'd like to remind folks that uh, on the 18th of uh, September is the day they've designated as POW MII Recognition Day uh, for those the prisoners of war that we've had and for those that did not return home. Uh, please uh, keep them in your thoughts and prayers on, uh, on Friday. And if you know uh, veterans, thank them for the, what they've done too. Melissa. Yes, um, it may seem early. However, absentee ballots for the November 3rd general election will be mailed approximately September 17th for those who have um, absentee requests on file. If you don't have one on file already, you may request an absentee ballot by going to myvote.wi.gov or calling the village hall for other options. Um, And just so the public is aware, there are mailings that are going out from third parties. Um, It's basically an absentee ballot application for those who already don't have one on file. You can complete that and mail it to us along with a copy of your uh, photo ID. Those aren't coming from our office, but they usually get directed to mail back here. Also, um, you may see census workers out working in the village. Uh, They'll be going door to door for those individuals who have not yet responded to the 2020 census, you can go to the village website under news and events, and then the 2020 census for more information. You also can complete the census online uh, so you don't have a visit by a census worker. There's still time to do that as well. And that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, item eight is plan commission. I believe they did not meet. Uh, nine personal and finance committee. We did meet and we have a claims approval requested. Uh, Stan, can I move to uh, recommend the board to approve the September 2020 non recurring claims of $57,471.75? Thank you, Kirk. Is there a second? Second. Okay, thank you, Brian. Uh, further discussion or questions? Hearing none, uh, let's see, it's going to be fun. Spending, uh, Kirk. Yes. Thank you. Kathy. Yes. Tim. Yes. Phil. Yes. Uh, Brian. Yes. Did I get you already, Tim? Yes, you did. I'm on it twice, but yes. Yeah, I got you on two different screens, so. (laughs) Yep. Uh, I can't wait till we can get back to the hall. All righty then. 
Public Works is next on the agenda, and Chair Update, Brian. Stay in Public Works uh, Committee did meet, and we have two items to bring forward, the first of which is catch, bear, uh, catch basin repairs, and I am recommending to have Everlast Rehab seal storm sewer catch basins with price not to exceed 8000 funding to be taken from repair and maintenance of storm sewer account. Second. Thank you. Uh, discussion? Okay, hearing none, we'll go back to uh, Kirk. Yes. Tim? Yes. Bill? Yes. Brian? Yes. Oh, Kathy moved up above there. Kathy? Yeah. Yes. Okay, and let's see. Did I get Phil yet? Yes. Okay, so everybody has been voted? Except for yourself, Stan. Except for myself, and of course I'm going to vote yes. <sighs> Okay, thank you. Um, next, right, Brian. The, yeah, the second item, Stan, was a uh, sanitary sewer control panel for our, our East Bank sanitary lift station. Um, I'm recommending to have B&M Technologies install new control panel for East Bank sanitary sewer lift station with costs not to exceed 19500 The funding will come from the 201 account. This is a budgeted you, item. A second. Thank you. Is there any further discussion there? Hearing none, uh, let's see. I'll go backwards this time. Kathy? Yes. Brian? Yes. Bill? Yes. Tim? Yes. Kirk? Yes. And I will vote yes. Thank you. Thank you, Brian, for the report. Uh, Next is Public Safety Committee recommendations. Chair update, Tim. And we did meet, but I, we have nothing to bring forward to the board tonight. Thank you. Item 12, Public Welfare Committee. Kirk? Uh, we did not meet. Thank you. Item 13, Park Board. Yep, so we added this because when we first started talking, we weren't 100% sure where schools are starting or what's going on with that. So we just wanted to make sure. So since that all started, we, uh, we don't need the request for that. Uh, park hours. Okay, so the the movie has been canceled. Uh, yeah, we 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 put it on there just in case what happened with uh, COVID in school. Oh, uh, sure. No, oh, no, thank you very much. And that's all you got. Yep. Okay, so item fourteen is to convene into closed session. So do we have a motion? I move to go into closed session. Thank you, Kathy. Is there a second? Second. Second. All right, Brian, I think, won that one. Uh, and so, uh, let's see. Kevin, I think we can say goodbye to you. Oh, we have to vote. To vote on well, we have to vote. Yep, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, all in favor of going into closed session, say goodbye, by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay, we're now back in open session, and we've got a – a motion for action items from closed session is, or would somebody make the motion, please? I move to. Oh, Go I ahead. move to. I move to um, have Melissa uh, t execute the tasks that we outlined in closed session. No thank, second. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, uh, thank you. And uh, the next item is uh, we are adjourned at 8.16. This is getting terrible. <laughs> thank you, folks. Thank good you. night, everybody. Have a good night. Good night. Good night.